Hi folks, Tom Weiser here again with my trusty videographer and otherwise known as my <laughs> sister Denise. We are actually standing in front of the property of my mom's house at 420 Grand Street. And let me tell you, as of a couple months ago, this place is unrecognizable. And for my family out there who hasn't really gotten a glance of my Tennessee family, I see you out there. Jason, there's Jason. I see him. And I see Sheila, and I see Mark, I see Rain, I see Job, all of my Tennessee family. This is going to be pretty remarkable for you to see. And in less than 14 hours from now, this house at 424 Grand Street, our home, is going to be a memory. Let's go this way. As you can see, there's a lot of construction. Uh, on the property. Uh, we're ready to go. And we're going to walk around this big piece of equipment. Millbacher and Sons. You want to pan onto that? That'll have a little bit of significance once I tell you a little story. Millbacher and Sons Construction, there's a little bit of an irony there how they ended up being the construction company that is going to be doing the demolition of my house, mother's house tomorrow morning. So come on with me. We're going to walk around the back of this big, what do you call it, Denise? What do you think? It's a bulldozer, think. big, back giant backhoe, something with a big scoop on it. Anyway, big. it's big. We're going to walk around the back, and we're going to come around this area. And let's look at this pile of broken up concrete. This is what's left of my mother's swimming pool deck. For those of you who were brought up in this house uh, and know this house well, about where I'm standing right now, there was a fence. Denise Pan over there, the remnants of the redwood fence that stood around my mother's pool deck. There was also a chain link fence that surrounded the house, uh, uh, surrounded the pool. And as you can see, the fence is gone and there is no way of knowing that a pool was ever in this area. Two years ago, the corner of the pool started to crumble over the embankment, and this is the first sign that we really knew that there was a real erosion problem. And in the last year and a half, we started seeing more and more trees just uprooted and falling down the embankment. And this seemed to be, for a single property owner, um, probably an impossible situation. If it was just eroding behind my mother's house, it would have probably devastated the value of her home. She probably would have never been able to sell it. It would have been just too cost prohibitive to, uh, to fix the problem as a private individual. But it just so happens that the problem was much bigger than any of us had ever realized. came with the house. Mom moved in here, mom and dad moved into this house in about 
didn't move to the house with them on uh, basically their request. So that's an entirely another story. But I had already moved out. It was, uh, let me get this straight, it was Anne, Denise, and Jim will remember this house better than anywhere. And of course, Jason, who spent uh, a good amount of his adolescence and early teen years at this home, they would remember this house and they would all individually have wonderful warm memories. One of the biggest memories has to do with the swimming pool. And this is where the Millbockers kind of come in. This is where the big irony is. As the kids grew up and moved out of the house, um, there was less and less interest in the swimming pool. And it was generally mom who was left with the task to clean the pool. And this angered my father. Now my father really never had anything to do with the swimming pool, but he was angry that mom was the only one that would, uh, would care to keep the pool maintenance up. So for the last couple of years, my father threatened that he was gonna turn the swimming pool into a big garden and he was gonna fill it in with dirt and he was gonna make it into a garden. Well, actually, what would you say, mid to late 80s? In the mid to late 80s, my dad fulfilled that promise. And the irony of it is, he grabbed a couple of his, of his, of his buddies from the Millbacher Construction, who came up one afternoon, dismantled the fence, brought in a couple of truckloads full of sand, filled in the swimming pool, topped it off with topsoil, and it became a very nice garden. In fact, the nice part about it was, it was already fenced in, so it would prevent any of the little critters and the little rabbits from, hard, from, from eating any of the stuff that was planted there. And actually, it was a very, very productive garden for many years. There was a lot of exotic plants and flowers planted in there. I remember when my brother Jim and I, we had uh, one little uh, stretch where we were planting all kinds of uh, pepper plants, all kinds of hot pepper plants. And uh, it was just a lot of great memories of the garden. In fact, it was a productive garden up until probably just about two summers ago. Uh, I know my sisters were coming in and they were putting in plants and, and it's hard to believe just looking at this place that there ever was a swimming pool, let alone a garden. Now pointing toward the house there, um, you will remember that this was the screened in area. Now it stands desolate, filled with a lot of the uh, insulation material from inside the home that had been torn out. Um, my mother had hours of entertaining her friends out here in the summertime. They would have iced tea and drink and have good times and play cards out in this very uh, screened in area. It was a place of great pleasure for a lot of our family. And now it lies desolate. And in just about uh, a little over 13 hours from now, um, we'll fall prey to these big machines that are in my mother's yard. Next, in the fourth part of Eve of Destruction, we're gonna do a little walk around my mom's house and then the final walk through the house. It'll be the last time anyone will get to see the house. Tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, this home at 424 Grand Street will be nothing but a memory.